One of the things I've been contemplating recently is how black men need to be more selfish. African-American men, sons of the gynocracy, Eidos males, as a collective, we need to be more selfish. I just see it in just so many different ways. And I was just looking at photos and I came across this picture. This is out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. And clearly it's during the protest. You see all this George Floyd graffiti signs up. And right in the middle is somebody put up this this miniature tarp and they spray painted on it and it says Black Joy and the O and Joy has a smiley face in there. And it's not a very pretty, I don't know, is that a picture? What do you call that? Like a tarp? It's not, the artwork is not beautiful. It's kind of ugly. And on it, it says Black Joy. <laughs> All right? I just, that was a great metaphor for what it really means to be black in America for many of us because the environment can be highly stressful. We've got a, a lot of unearned hostility that we have to face. Yet in the middle of this, we've got to find some black joy. And I think for many of us, that means as black men, we need to be more selfish. Just living in the inner city, living in a city can be painful for black boys, for black men, for black males, and black women too. There's no doubt about that. And then there's the, you know, the 500 ton racism and, and stress that you get in your life. You got your bills, you got your career, you got, you know, the relationships that you got to, that you have to maintain with people. You've got racism, you've got, you know, health issues. I mean, anything that can go wrong is eventually, you know, can go, will go wrong, right? Murphy's law. But then there's these environmental stressors out here that we all have to deal with that are invisible. Like something as simple as air pollution. We all know that cars produce a lot of air pollution, but many of us aren't aware that, and it's really, this is a form of what they call environmental racism, where you might live in a neighborhood that is traditionally black or traditionally on the poorer side of town. And what you don't realize is that you'll have businesses there and they might have like a glass manufacturing business right there in your neighborhood. And you saw it, you drove by and you, didn't, you saw the smokestack and didn't think much of it. But you didn't know that that business and other businesses that deal with chemicals and raw materials, that when they process them, that those chemicals go in the air and they come down, back down in the rain and make people sick and cause cancer and illness and disease. That's a real problem throughout America. And this impacts the black community more than it does it does other communities because, you know, because racism, because when they planned the city out a hundred years ago where black po people were supposed to live, maybe they put it on some you know, super fun site, or they put it in somewhere where you had these businesses where they were just dumping chemicals in the ground. And then they built homes for poor people to live in, black people to live in. And so maybe that, that, that those chemicals got into the, the, the well water. Now, all of a sudden you got clusters of people getting sick because they're drinking this tap water or, or whatever it is or they're just breathing the air or you know and they're coming in contact with these with these chemicals and these substances that can make you sick a lot of us don't know that and you wouldn't even realize that could be happening in your own neighborhood unless you knew somebody who was on your neighborhood association or were, were going to these these city meetings where they talked about air quality and, you're, you, and you might need to check the data yourself to understand that. And I'm sure, hopefully, you know, you have people in your area that actually are investigating this and you're aware of this, but this happens all throughout the country. Well, that's air pollution, but there's other ways that black men are, are under attack. And one of the ways that, that we, one of the things that we know about is the gynocracy, where if black men didn't come to YouTube and really start to talk about this, produce books, and to make you know video content and share this with the world, a lot of people just would still be in the dark about this. 
And this is why black men need to be selfish because there's so much stress on black men, so many issues that black men have to deal with that we need to be selfish so we can focus our minds and our attention on things that can bring us massive success because we have so many issues that are attacking us that we don't have time to deal with those all or to examine those all. And it's almost better just to have a single-minded focus to work on your own wealth, to work on your own portfolio, on your own nest egg, where you're working on your own ability to access power to build a better life for yourself. And there's too many black men that have been acculturated in a way where they they don't want to be selfish. They're the care bears. They want to solve every problem and let's let's talk about it. Let's talk about this problem. Instead of saying, let's talk about the solution, implement the solution and then move on to something that's got a massive payout at the end. And this is where black men should be, but we're not selfish enough. And really, maybe the term selfish probably isn't the best way to articulate what I'm trying to convey to you. Because really what's selfishness? Selfishness is really a focus in on oneself, almost to the detriment of other people and the people around me in a way that hurts other people and, and puts me in a bad light because I'm not treating those around me in a way that's fair and moral and just. So really, I don't mean that black men need to be more selfish by the, I don't mean that in the dictionary term, but I mean more, more self-fulfilling. I think that was a, a better phrasing. Black men need to be more self-fulfilling. I mean, you got racist cops, you know, you got racist teachers, you go to a restaurant and how many of you have went to a, a restaurant and the server put you right next to the front door because they got the lazies and they're like, oh, well, we'll just sit you right here. And you, you think like, are you just sending me here because I'm black and you're getting lazy or you don't, you know, you don't want me to put, put you in the main room with the other customers. Or they just kind of flippantly, you know, put your water on the table or kind of rude setting your silverware down. You get these microaggressions and they can take a toll. Well, as a thinking black man, we can't really worry about that too much because we get so much of that. <laughs> It just can create a cycle where you're majoring in the minors when you focus in on that minor stuff. And we need to we need to focus on the major stuff. Right? And when we don't, and we have all these black men who want to talk about, you know, in these YouTube streets about the gynocracy and, and black women and oh, they've done us so dirty and oh, this is so horrible, and this is what they've done to us. And Really what that does is create a culture of low expectations. And I see that with a lot of black men. I see that with a lot of black men. On Sunday, I was in my yard and I was doing yard work, mowing the lawn, throwing down some fertilizer. And I was listening to Roger's live stream. He had a, a great live stream. And it had I don't remember the title, but it had something to do with black men putting requirements on the women that they date to make sure that you're not letting any you're not letting any women into your life you're not going to form a family with or get married to a woman who's anything less than what you need her to be what you want her to be what you require her to be where you're laying down the law for yourself and I'm a big proponent of that. I think that black men should scour the earth to find the right type of if scour the earth if they need to in order to find the right woman to start a family with so they can have productive, healthy, strong offspring that can come out here and slay dragons and then bring that gold back home to their to their families, to their communities. And I think a lot of black men have a real problem with that because Somebody got on that panel and he said that black men don't even like femininity. So if they had feminine women, they wouldn't even know what to do with it. That black men like this sassiness out of women. And that they that they they like this toxic sassiness. They like the attitude. And then said that black women can't change. They don't have the training. There's nothing you can do. 
and then went on to tell stories how he dated masculine women and was went out to a fundraiser or some white, you know, white tablecloth dinner or function. Maybe it was like a work, like a corporate meeting, a corporate dinner and saying how he brought this masculine woman and she couldn't fit into the culture. <laughs> and pretty much trying to shut Roger down, trying to tell Roger that, no, you're kind of wasting your time. Black men shouldn't as assert exactly what they want to women that they're dating because black women can't change. And he said that they can't change. They haven't been trained to change and they can't change. And I, I get where he's coming from. I'm not, this isn't really a judgment, but it's really a, an analysis. And what I'm seeing is a mindset of low expectations. How, how dare you tell another black man not to have requirements, not to put it out into the universe that he needs to have his needs met and that he, he should have his, his wants met too. As a black man, you need to have higher requirements for that. You've got to have a higher self-esteem in that. You need to tell... It's my job as a black man to produce brotherhood. And part of quality brotherhood is not in just empowering black men. Fuck that. That's like a... That's one of these weasel words like black empowerment. No. We want to give black people power we don't want to have empowerment we want power and in order to have power you have to have high expectations you have to have a thought process that you can get what you want and you will be not you will not be denied no matter what and if that means you have to get a woman with a different paint job who comes from a different culture who comes from a different continent whatever it is as a black man you have agency and the autonomy and you have the capabilities of doing that for yourself. And anyone who tells you different has low self-esteem and is compromised and cannot be trusted. Can't be trusted in positions of leadership. They tell on themselves. They tell on themselves. I told you guys for years now, culture is one of the most oppressive things on the planet. Because everything so it looks seems so normal within the culture. Well, this is just how we do things, and women can't change. And well, you know, black men, we like masculine women. We we, we don't really like feminine women. We never had none, and we get uncomfortable around feminine women. So, you should, you know, it doesn't make any sense to be telling black men to you know to require a feminine woman because he probably just you know ruined it anyways. <laughs> well, that's because you see yourself through the eyes of the gynocracy and you think that the gynocracy is fixed that it can't be changed unless maybe you know white zaddy comes here and start changing policy and then and then maybe something can happen but black men ourselves oh no we can't do anything about that and that's what that's what sustained oppression does to people it makes it breaks their mind it breaks people's will and i don't want to see any anyone's will broken i want you to still experience black joy even in the midst of chaos and instability black men meet need more self fulfillment black men need more self fulfillment Black men need more self-fulfillment. It's like an Asian culture. They have a deep respect for one another. It's one of the things that's lacking with black men. We don't have a deep reverence for one another. See, like in Japan, when they bow, what do they say? The bow is about respect. They bend over, I honor you. I'm showing you respect by bowing. And the more a man bends over to another man, the more he leans forward, the deeper the bow, the deeper the reverence, the deeper the respect. That's what black, that's what black men they need. That's what we need, brothers. That's what we need is that type of deep reverence for one another. Because that deep reverence, that respect, that open air public acknowledgement, 
of that respect, it creates a culture of high expectations because I know what you've been through. I know what you're capable of, both good and bad. And I respect and have reverence for it all because the same light that you illuminate to this world is the same light that I have too. And maybe it might shine a different direction or maybe the the brightness might be a, a little bit different between us. But at the core is a very similar light. It's the same. And we need to have that reverence between one another. And that creates self-fulfillment. Because ultimately, what, what's the quote? You are my other me. You are my other me. We're on this earth together. It's spinning around and we're here together. And we should be building together. Humans are pack animals. And as and our tribe is our pack. And we should be building together. Not arguing and fighting and dragging one another. That's insanity. And it's a culture of low expectations. There's nothing fulfilling about that. We need more selfishness. We need more self-fulfillment. We need... See, this is why it's important you tell a black man you need to get the best woman that you can for yourself. And you'll have a lot of these guys that are pro-black ideologues. And I get it, man. This is I'm not trying to beat up on guys for being pro-black and, you know, you got your black berets and your fists in the air. I have no problems with that at all. What I have an issue with is that too many black men are more loyal to the black ideology than they are to black men themselves. So what they end up doing is saying, no, 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 you shouldn't have high expectations for women. You should just take what you what you can get. And even if, you know, she tears you out the frame and, you know, she divorces you or, you know, sticks you with a kid that you didn't want. Well, you had a black child and that's all that counts. Black love 2022. And that's 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 bullshit, because what black men need and what would be best for us is for us to have wives. The mother of our children should be highly, highly focused on our children's education and our children's success. And in order to do that in this competitive world, you're going to need a two parent home. And not only that, really, you want to live in a two parent home community. Well, if you tell black men they can't, they can't deal with a feminine woman and you can't change black woman, then what you're saying that is that no, you come from a culture of low expectations and you should honor that culture of low expectations. So I'm just going to shoot you down. Anything that you try to say that would take you away from this culture of low expectations, I'm going to try to distract you from doing that. And I think it's right there we can see that's another form of one of these invisible forms of violence towards black men. That's like a form of air pollution. You don't really see it. You don't taste it because most people aren't going to say that to your face. But you could just infer it from the culture. We need to be more selfish. We need to be more self-fulfilling. We should want more class. Like we like more more class as far as you know our behaviors or how we how we move our je ne sais quoi is the best way to put that. Our swagger should be classy, right? And we should have we should have we should be more classy as black men because that builds dignity with with one another. And I'm not saying you got to wear a suit or you got to dress a certain way, but even no matter how you dress, you want to have a distinguished presence. You want to reflect your inner peace. You want to reflect your dignity. You want to reflect who you are in the positive aspects. And you don't do it necessarily to look counterculture. You do it because it helps you move in the right way in this world. And it creates the black joy that you want for yourself. That it acts as a fulfilling way of, of appearing in this world. But not only that class, really, that's that's just the minor class. Because really, you want to evolve 
that type of class so you can evolve into a higher socioeconomic class itself. So you can go from the lower class to the middle class and from the middle class to the upper class. Instead of saying, nah, black folks, we're niggas. We don't do that. We're not, we don't, you know, we're masculine and our women can't change. They just can't do it. They need training. <laughs> I mean, that just, that just tells me that black men need to have more self-fulfilling positive affirmations. I'm a black man and I deserve a submissive wife. I'm a black man and I need a submissive wife because she's going to make, she's going to be the best mother for my children. I need a submissive wife because that's the only type of wife that's going to give me a fulfilling marriage. Those type of positive affirmations. We can't keep recycling the same conversations over and over and over. So in 20 years, maybe they do a new segment on CNN or maybe they talk about this in the school books in 2036 life's too life's too short life's too short not to build yourself up and get those rewards for yourself now do things that are self-fulfilling be selfish black man be selfish but don't be selfish in a way that injures the people around you be selfish in a way where you hyper focus on yourself for an extended period of time years maybe maybe even a decade where you cut people out of your life that don't deserve to be in your life where you put all your attention on your education and your career and the network of people that can put you in positions of power so you can type to have the type of influence that you want, so you can accrue the type of wealth that you want, so you can go out and slay a big ass fucking dragon and bring that gold back to your home for your wife and your children and your community. If more black men were selfish like that, and more black men acted in a self-fulfilling way, doing things for ourselves that help ourselves, it's really a form of self-love. I mean, I don't gotta tell you, the black community severely lacks love. Love for one another, which is bad enough, but even worse, there's a lack of love for oneself, especially between black men. A lot of us don't love, e love ourselves in the right type of way. This is why so many black men don't require a submissive wife and they were scared to fix their li lips to even say that that's what they want. This, this culture of low expectations has to end with you as the individual. And it's got to end with the people around you. And I don't mean chasing cheap success, fleeting success, getting yourself into bullshit. I mean really immersing yourself in this world where you're actively chasing things that are fruitful, that are beautiful, that have a payoff at the end. These things are generally hard. They're hard to find. They're expensive. It takes hard work to achieve. It takes long hours. It takes long hours to learn how to work, to do those, to, to get the work that does the work that has the payoff at the end. Right? It's the difference between getting a, psycho a four-year psychology degree and a, a four-year electrical engineering degree. Both you could do in four years, but one's way harder than the other, and one is going to have you employed for a lifetime. We've got to be more selfish, black man. 
We've got to do things that are more self-fulfilling. Find that black joy. Not black joy for other people's black joy. Your black joy. This is why they get on black men so much who you might snowboard or, you know, is into anime or, you know, or whatever it is. There's more black people in anime, you know, now. But you know what I'm saying? That a lot of black people, black men in particular, get ostracized when they really are selfish and they go after their own joy. You see, a lot of black men who are highly successful hyper focus themselves in a way that others won't do. They almost, they almost have a, a sociopathic mindset towards their own career and, and their work ethic shows that. And then they have massive success. But in doing that, maybe they lose a little bit of charisma, they lose some social skills, they, you know, and then they don't they don't come across as black enough. And then they look at him and they go, oh, well, you know, you, you're a, uh, you know, he's just acting like Uncle Tom. Look at him, he's a Carlton. He's a Carlton Banks. He's rich and he's educated and, I mean, he looks as black as me, but, you know, he don't sound as black and he, his money don't look black. He got that white money, you know what I mean? He got that small hat money. He's looking pretty good with, with his net worth. And then, and then he starts to feel, and then that guy might even say, I don't even feel that black anymore. Like the world's kind of letting me know. But that's that's because a lot of people have a culture of low expectations. And they don't really want black men to evolve. They don't think black men should be able to evolve out, outside of this pro-black ideology and culture that we have. And again, because culture can be one of the most oppressive things on the planet. And what's interesting is that a lot of non-black men believe that black men ourselves don't have permission to change the culture in the way in ways that fit us best as if we have to let other demographics of people maybe it's our own women no we, we've got to form the culture where it, it serves them best and not us and in some ways we do that even with non-black people you know we got to we got a code switch you know, when we're around them, we, we got to make them co comfortable to achieve the type of success that we want. And I'm not saying that's what everybody does, but you do got to look at that. You got to find your black joy and you got to stand on that because you're a man. The same light that's in Michael Jordan is the same light that's within you. And you just got to tap into it. You got to nurture it. You got to grow it. It's like clay you've got to form who you are at the core into something that you want to be that you're not that maybe you're not there yet hopefully you are and then you got to maintain it and keep growing black men need to be more selfish i mean you see these guys that go to the oscars awards and they're, sl they're slapping people and it's because they weren't selfish enough from the beginning. You could just see it. It's like, man, the reason you're snapping like that on people is because you weren't selfish from the beginning. You didn't say, I required before we get married, I need you to be submissive. And I, not only do I need you to be submissive, this is totally voluntary. I need you to want to be submissive, whether I'm here or not, because that's who you want to be. And if you don't, that's fine. It's just not going to work out. But oh no, some guys, they don't believe, they don't believe they have permission to do that. They don't think they can, that they should pair bond with a woman like that. It's not black enough, you know. She's not sassing me and giving me a hard time and trying to boss me around and, and showing me disrespect. And then I got to even really question her blackness. If she treats me worse, then I know she's really black. And now, now I got to, I get to keep, really keep my black card. I'm going to put my black co card on my shoulder I'm going to be pro-black now because I got a woman who beats me down at home don't be that dude be more selfish from the beginning I mean, these guys are on these guys are on some bullshit as a black man you need to require a submissive woman and if you don't you're not a thinking black man period like if you're going to get married if you're going to have a significant other if not then you're just you're just washing around in the ocean and whatever comes to you comes to you is it a starfish you're going to get bitten leg in a shark by a shark you're going to get stung by a stingray or you're going to pull out a salmon well you, you don't know you don't know 
you just splish splashing in the water and i and i need you to be more selfish than that and have more of an intention on how you build your family structure how you interact with women set the standard for yourself black man be more selfish because that brand of selfishness creates more self-fulfillment at the end and many of us weren't acculturated to even feel comfortable to lay down the law in that way. And I want to give that to you, black man. I want to give you that power. I don't want to give you empowerment. I want to give you that power. The power is already there. You just need to go snatch it. This is out of love, okay? If I could be off-putting or disrespectful or, you know, you're getting in your fee-fees. I get it. Blame, blame my brain and not my heart. I'm saying this from a foundation of love for black men, black women, and the black community. If black men want to be pro-black and repair the black community and get black women back, you've got to be more selfish. you got to lay down the law. Like, if you're going to be in my life, this is what it's going to be. And this is what we're going to go after. How many wasted man hours are spent on black men talking about women that really don't want you anyways and that you really don't want and you just want some fantasy land vision of a woman that doesn't exist and everybody was to talk 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 instead of do and putting the work in see once you start putting the work in then black men start getting married to quality wives and producing quality children then you're gonna have a quality community and then you're gonna have the outcomes that you want but black men are, aren't being selfish in that way if you can't get a woman from your tribe you get one from a different culture maybe she's got a different paint job maybe she speaks a different language it doesn't matter at the end of the day are you going to live a self-fulfilling life? Or are you going to live your life for other people who don't give a, who've proven not to give a fuck about you? And at the very least, will stab you in the back and you better keep an eye out on them. That's not a, that's no way to live a self-fulfilling life. That's being like in a cult. That's what cult members do. Cult members have cult leaders and the cult leader goes, here's your problems. The world is against you. I identify with your pain and they go but I'm here to protect you and I have solutions and then what they do is they just string you along and use you and play with your toy with your emotions what they do to cult followers then to toy with your emotions to make them feel good while they're picking their pocket and abusing them in a myriad of different ways and the people feel good about it like no i mean yeah it's you know it's tough work being a cult leader so if he abuses me yeah, I, I get it i mean look at the pressure that's on him i'm screwed up and he, he took me in doesn't work that way folks be more selfish say no i'm not gonna tolerate this man this silly mcgilly nonsense y'all talking about i'm not gonna try to i'm not gonna i'm not gonna deal with what you're trying to put on my plate and the moment you do that black man the moment you start standing on your square people have no choice but to either do what it takes to stay in your world or they'll leave and either way that's a win-win because if why would you want to deal with people that aren't going to fulfill what you need them to fulfill and not even that like interfere with your self-fulfillment and that's the real problem black men go we can't do that we can't leave the guy gynocracy if we leave the guy gynocracy well then what's going to happen there's too much uncertainty we'll just die we'll die out we won't have a black race what you're doing is going to lead to the end of the black race because all you're doing is talking about the same problem over and over in this acerbic way and getting men more hostile and more angry and we see this terrible form of disrespect where do you think this divestors came from see this is why we need to be selfish more selfish because this were the, because the divestors are saying oh this is what y'all are leaving us this is how we treat y'all well instead of taking accountability which 
which they should do. They just go, we'll just fuck you. We're just going to deal with other men because I don't like what you said. Yeah, it's 100 percent accurate, but I don't like that you even said it. You don't have the power to say it. So we're, we're so we're going to poop on you. <laughs> we're going to take a turd on you and then we're going to get with these white boys, nigga. And if we would just be more selfish from the beginning and saying this is what we require, this is what we need, and this is what we want. And that's what it is. And we're going to deal, we're going to scour the earth if we have to, to deal with women like that. And when we find one, we're going to honor her, we're going to respect her, we're going to put her, we're going to put her in the best position that we can that we can in life. That's the real queen. A submissive wife is a real queen. And when you have a collection, a community of men who have women that are commu committed to their marriage, to their husband, to their children and their community, and we're all working together. Well, now you've got a culture of high outcomes. Just think about this, black man. I need you to be more selfish. And again, not selfish where, all I, you know, look at me. You know, I'm a high value man. I got all this money, but, you know, I'm not going to bring you guys up with me. No, 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 no. You want to be selfish in a way where you have to grow yourself into the type of person and surround yourself with the right type of people and separate yourself for a while from any and all bullshit. So you can be a dragon slayer, go out and chop the head off one of these dragons, take all that gold, all those riches, after you slay that dragon, you bring it back home to your family, to your children, to your community. And you, you know, your wife is right there and the men around you are, are helping you out and you're leaning on them in ways to help build whatever you're trying to build. I'm not talking about fucking women. We're not talking about women anymore. We're not talking about women anymore unless it's for, unless it's from a, a complete position of strength. Unless be selfish, black man, and talk about women only from a position of strength. What you want, what you requ require, and what you need. Because that way, you start getting things done, and things don't get repetitive, and you really start to move the needle and we'll, we're going to find out what the what is we will find out what the what is because a lot of guys can't do that a lot of guys will get their card pulled and they keep exposing themselves one by one they keep exposing themselves and these men need to be more selfish they need to be more selfish and they need to talk to other men and let them know they need to be more selfish and live a more self-fulfilling life. Have you ever had a goal for yourself that you thought you couldn't achieve? But then you, you tried it anyways. You know, you had a lot of self-doubt. You're like, I don't know if I could actually do this. You know, I want to be a 4.0 student this semester. And it's something you never did before. You never got a 4.0. And you just focus yourself, man. You just, you're doing that homework. Every day, you do the homework twice. You go into the tutoring lab to go get your paper worked on. Maybe, you know, the, the first term, you, you didn't, you didn't even get, you got a 3.5. You failed. You didn't reach your goal. You failed. You got a 3.5, which is okay. I mean, it's, it's good to some. It's okay. But you know that you failed, but then you go, you know what? This shit ain't over. I got another term to, you know, school term to get this 4.0. So you just, st you stayed at it. You stayed at it because really there's nothing you can't do if you put your mind to it and you work at it over time. Generally, you can get shit done if you just stay committed to the task and stop worrying about these women that don't want you. And then you get this single-minded focus, then all of a sudden you get that 4.0. You go, oh, oh, I can do this. And then you get this taste for even more. You start to get hungrier. You go, oh, I understand the process. I'm an alchemist. Got an unstoppable work, work ethic.
Look, man. I just need black men to be more selfish, man. I do. I just need guys to be more selfish and to encourage other black men to be more selfish because selfish men focus on themselves in a way that they can accrue power. And when you're dealing with men who've accrued power, now you can really get things done as a collective. And they say, no, black man, you can't do this. We're just going to have to wait it out. How many, I mean, how many black men are going to be in their, in their 40s having children? To unmarried women. That's going to be a lot. That's going to be a lot. Or if they don't have children at all, that's even worse. Now we, now we lose numbers. Oh no, but being pro-black is more important than the, the success of people classified as black. And oh my goodness, if the skin tone lightens up, oh, the world's going to end. Oh no, we've succumbed to white supremacy. <laughs> well, let me tell you something, homeboy. You already believe in the system of white supremacy if you value your skin tone in such a way that you would destroy your children's future in order to keep their skin tone a certain color. White supremacy, bro, told you to do that. White supremacy told you to highly value your skin tone, even to the detriment of your own offspring, to this, the detriment of your own community members. It's called internalized white supremacy. But if you're more selfish, you're gonna see right through that. Cause you go, what's best for me? What's best for my offspring? What's going to be put me in the best position to accrue power? You go, it ain't that bullshit over there. I ain't fucking with that shit over there. I'm going to focus on accruing power. I'm going to focus on a family that helps me accrue power. I'm going to deal with other men that help me accrue power. And if that means that I need to be selfish for the in a, for a short period of time, then that's what I'm going to do. Because out of that, then I'm going to be able to climb mountains, be able to burn down a whole mountainside. The power is yours, but you have to go out and go get it. It's just it's just waiting for you. There's plenty of it out there available. You just have to go out there and get it. Why do you think they say that behind every successful man is a successful woman? You go, yeah, but what about here? That's not always true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We know it's not always true. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But anybody who's had a powerful wife at home, a submissive wife, which is the most noble, the most regal, the most, has the most intellect, has the most power, the most powerful woman. It's a submissive wife because they're your helpmate. They're right by your side, doing everything they can for you, for your family, for her children, for her, her community. So she moves in a way to help accrue power because she realizes that she's a vessel for power in the same way that you recognize that yourself is a vessel for power. You've got to be more selfish. Black men, as black men, we have to give each other permission to be more selfish. Give yourself permission to be more selfish and give other black men permission to give themselves to to, to give themselves a permission to be more selfish like it's our culture if we're black and it's black culture then it's our culture then make the culture work for us we should have a culture of selfishness for black men especially because we're already behind the eight ball this is common sense but see, this is, but a lot of people don't realize this and don't 
have it intellectualized this, they probably feel it, they understand it. I mean, this ain't rocket scientists. I'm sure you thought about this before, but it hasn't embedded it hasn't been embedded in the culture because the culture acts as a prison itself where it goes, that's not how we do things. We're niggas. There's no real hierarchy. You know, a lot of black people will tell you I don't see a higher hierarchy above black men. Black men are all black men. I mean, other demographics, they only see when they see a black man, all they see is one type of black man and that's the only way they're going to treat you and that's like that's what see that you're on that bullshit you, that's the culture of low expectations that's that pro-black ideology this is where you see yourself through the lens of white supremacy because i can tell you the way you go out into this world and you present yourself in the world is going to have a whole lot to do with how you're treated and if anybody tells you different doesn't understand power and is not successful and has not been successful long term like into their 50s into their 40s where they really start to feel how this world really works yeah black this black ideology this i'm black pro-black ideology like the whole just concept of blackness is white supremacy I mean, I already broke it down. You know it is. I mean, you hear that. There's no way you can hear that and go, no, that's not true. If you've listened to my videos in the past about that or you've thought about it for 90 seconds on your own, of course the concept of race is racism and white supremacy itself. So if we over, like, overly identify as black, we really have to be careful with that because then we're going to identify, we're going to see ourselves through the lens of white supremacy and then create a, a culture of low expectations for ourselves. You already know that's what happened. Everybody knows. That. Everybody knows that's pretty much how it works. And if we want to break that as black men and make black culture work for us, then we definitely have to be more selfish and create a culture of black be black men being selfish.